morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Reverend Tamara Merrill, and I'm so blessed to be here and see, look at the crowd this morning. How wonderful. I would love, you know, it is, as Leah said, very special that we are chosen to be the center of the year for all the beautiful people here make that happen. And Elijah is our leader. And I want just to give him a shout out in your mind and heart today as he's flying. He left, Jason took him very early this morning, 4.30, to fly out. So let's it, it, just use our voices and say whatever to Elijah. Hello, good luck, Elijah. yay. Hey, Elijah! <laughs> I know he felt that flying in the sky. <laughs> oh, yeah, if he can watch on his phone. Yeah, he will be watching. So I start my um, sermons usually with an intention. And I invite you also to, to close your eyes for maybe 20, 30 seconds and to find an intention that you would like to have for yourself. Could be some peace, an insight, whatever it is that you would like to find this morning. So let us go quietly together in the silence for 20 seconds and think of an intention that you would like to get from the music, from the message, from the day. Let us take a deep breath in and release. Thank you. So as you have heard, the theme of the year is Grand Rising. The theme for the month is Divine Discomfort. Being a person of 60-something years of age, I was raised in religious science or science of the mind or centers for spiritual living. And um, let me tell you, it is so wonderful to have us start looking at the other aspects of life in this modality, in this material form. So many times we have spiritual bypass, or what I call spiritual malpractice. <laughs> <laughs> because just like in beautiful Catholicism, you know, you always hear about the guilt. In um, the Jewish religion, you always hear about the guilt. <laughs> and we are no different. We go upon ourselves to judge what's happening in our lives. And it's not so much the conversations that we have with others as it is the ones we ruminate about with ourselves. And there's this wonderful thing we have in our perceptions is that we tend to believe more in the material than we do in the spiritual. Therefore, if life looks good, it must be good. And that's not always the case. As we see fame and fortune and people that seem to have the luck of the draw, and they're not happy. So happiness is truly that inside job. I have a story to tell after I do my quotes. And I wasn't sure I was going to share it because I was embarrassed. And <laughs> I felt like a spiritual drama queen. So, um, <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, you know, uh, a few comments of, from people after this incident happened this week, and I shared with Elijah, Elijah said, you know what, Tamara, I think these uh, themes are getting kind of dangerous for you. I said, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I like to live them deeply. <laughs> and uh, when they're about discomfort, pain, and self-care, that didn't work out very well for me, it seems. <laughs> But it really did. But from the outside, it doesn't seem so. So I invite you, with the story that I'm sure you've heard before, to look a little deeper within your own heart and mind. And I'm going to tell a story after I read this. I'm going to start with the Webster's uh, definition 
of divine and then discomfort. Divine. Divine means of God, from God. Angelic, celestial, sacred, holy, mystical, spiritual, eternal, beautiful, transcendent, and wonderful. I'll buy all that, right? <laughs> discomfort. An absence of comfort or ease. Hardship. Discomfort can be a signal or a sign to redirect your mind, emotions, and body. So I thought, woo, okay. <laughs> and as I was trying to grasp my feelings over my spiritual drama queen incident this week, I read this and I was like, wow. It said, everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. Whether it be finding new love again, how vulnerable do you get when you're trying to find a partner, right? Start a new job. Um, heal a relationship with a family member or friend. Or stand beside a loved one or beloved that's ill. Those are hard discomforts. And nobody goes through this material life without some troubled waters. And as a spiritual warrior, we are here to navigate the troubled waters with our light, the turbulence we have to navigate through. When we celebrate ease, hallelujah! <laughs> but the true celebration is when we can celebrate the small light that we can find when we can't find it, like in that song. Yes, yes, yes. Those dark nights, those dark moments, those times where, in this philosophy, I've heard people say in the 80s when the minister got cancer, well, he's not a very good minister, he got cancer. What was he thinking? What was in his consciousness? We do have some of that in this, in this philosophy. That if life isn't like, got a lot of money, you're, everything looks perfect, that um, you're doing something wrong. That's not true. And our social media is really a great place to look at that. When you look at social media, it's like there's filters, and there's pictures, and everything looks beautiful. And they say, oh, we just went to Hawaii, we just did this, we just did that. I know both my nieces, oh, they're beautiful, and they have beautiful families, and everything on Facebook, like heaven on earth. A year later, they're both divorced. So <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, um, what's on the outside doesn't always match what's on the inside. And Ernest Holmes says, it's not that we attract what we think, we become what we think, and what we become, we shall attract. But it's even deeper than that, because we have something called a race consciousness, which is society, which is the world, which is war, which is sickness, which is suffering. And those things are real too, as real in the material world as it gets. But there's a reality that we stand in as spiritual warriors, that there's something bigger, something more that always is going on in our lives, and that is the unseen, the immaterial the force of things like love, like peace, like connection. And I see it all the time where I'm in discomfort and I will numb it out and then I don't hear the message from the messenger of pain, the messenger from discomfort. There's a message in there. And only the brave and vulnerable will walk through it because it's darn uncomfortable. And our mind says, hey, in this physical body, baby, it's all about survival. So we don't want to be in fear, in danger. We don't want to, um, we want it the easy road. We don't want the struggle because we might get hurt. So we protect ourselves. And then we protect ourselves from the very things we want to experience in life. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a great example of some things like that. So... To have courage, you cannot have courage without vulnerability. It doesn't exist. And now I am going 
to give you the story of the farmer and then my story after that. <laughs> There's a Taoist story about a farmer who finds and captures this beautiful stallion. And I'm sure most of you have heard it, but it's so appropriate today. And he brings the stallion back to the farm, and he's an elderly gentleman with his young son. And they're not doing that well. They have one or two mares. And the neighbors go, how fortunate it is for you to have gotten this beautiful stallion. You're so fortunate, and now you're going to be of wealth. And he says, maybe so, maybe not. Only time will tell. Then, the next morning, the stallion breaks loose and steals the very two mares he had, his, all his wealth. And some... And the neighbors go, oh, how unfortunate. You lost everything now. How, what will you do? So unfortunate. And he says, maybe so, maybe not. Only time will tell. Well, the very next day, it's a four-day thing, the very next day, <laughs> the stallion comes back with seven more mares on top of his four. And the neighbors go, you are truly, really fortunate. Now, look at this. You've doubled the mayors, and you're so wealthy and rich. And he goes, maybe so, maybe not. Only time will tell. Well, his son was trying to break the stallion, and his son broke his leg. And he was the one to do all the work on the farm because the farmer was getting older. And the son broke his leg, and the neighbors go, oh, it was that stallion's fault. How unfortunate it brought you. Now you can't take care of your farm. And he goes, maybe so, maybe not. Only time will tell. Whew. The very day that he broke his leg, the military came in to take all the young men to a war in the village, and his son was not taken. And the cry of the neighbors, how fortunate you are, <laughs> as they're grieving their boys going off to war. And he says, maybe so, maybe not. Only time will tell. Whew. So I know you've heard that before, but it's a reminder how we judge things. So OK, here's my story. You know, when we did self-care, I fell. Bro fractured my femur. Then I fell again, hit my head on the other topic. And then the last topic, I stepped on a marble and, uh, you know, three months recovery of a, a broken ankle compound fracture. Um, how fortunate, how unfortunate, maybe so, maybe not, only time will tell. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> so on... Uh, on um, the day before Valen no, Valentine's Day, I went out with my friend Kathy for a cup of coffee. And I um, had gone out to dinner the night before and left the dome light on in the car, you know. And of course, you know, the battery dies. And so I got, um, <laughs> my neighbor says, hey, you left the dome light in your car. And I said, uh-oh, I'm going to have coffee with my friend Kathy. I better get out there and see if I have to jump start the car. And I uh, couldn't find my keys anywhere. And I thought, that's really weird. I have a big pink ball on it so I don't lose it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is weird. And I got AAA to come and jump the car and made it. And, um, but meantime, Kathy came and picked me up because I was like, I couldn't find them for a while. <sighs> and life goes on. So that night, Valentine's night, about 1.40 in the morning, I couldn't sleep. And um, my son, Doug, couldn't sleep either. So we were watching a movie. And Doug comes running in the living room, because he's watching downstairs. And he goes, Mom, Mom, somebody turned on the car. And then we go, out, we go to the front door, and someone's taking off with my car. They stole my car. And I'm watching my car go down the street, right? And I'm like, this stuff is getting really too close and personal for me divine discomfort. I am not happy with these topics. 
Can't we have one about joy and happiness here? Chimney Christmas, you know? So I'm like, holy, you know, holy. And, um, and I, I thank God for 911. I call 911. And I've I'm, I'm got all this adrenaline going. And they come. And there's this person in, um, it happens so quick. There's this person in a white Cadillac SUV, a woman sitting there. And they kind of have her surrounded and detained. And the drama goes on. They're taking, making sure I didn't set it up because, you know, a lot of people set things up to steal, somebody to steal their car so they could get the insurance. So how many miles do I have? I said, it's paid off. I just paid it off. And I don't have, you know, that many miles, blah, blah, blah. And in about 20 minutes, they go, we have your car. They found the guy on Airport Boulevard. And here is the interesting part. They found the guy on Airport Boulevard, and he turned into a neighborhood and then abandoned the car and took my keys, darn it. But um, so he <laughs> obviously had found my keys, or maybe because the dome light, I don't know. I was trying to be Dr. Cl um, what is that? Cluse. Yes. <laughs> trying to figure out what happened. So it's 2.30 in the morning. I'm, you know, still hobbling along. And he goes, either we impound your car and you can get it out for $300 or you could go pick it up. And I was like, hmm, who am I going to wake up to help me go pick my car up? Because <laughs> they, they won't take you. So anyway, I, um, I stay in my pajamas with a coat over my pajamas. And my friend Jeff comes and picks me up. And as we're leaving, I see somebody hiding in the bushes. And I was like, okay, that's really weird. And we go into this neighborhood in Watsonville, and the car is totally dead. I mean, there's not even a click, click, click. And I thought, well, that's really weird, because how could in 20 minutes could it die like that? Do you know what happened? I think. I don't have 100% sure. But before Kathy came over, the trip, I mean, after Kathy came over, the AAA jump started my car. The guy couldn't steal it when he wanted to because it was dead. So he stole it in the middle of the night. He was on a chase with the police. And something had happened to the wire that goes around the battery. You know, it came loose when he, they jump-started it. So as they're chasing him, the car lost power. <laughs> and he jumped out and ran away. So it wasn't an accident. It wasn't crashed into another car. And I thought... Wow, the source of the power in the car is in the battery, and it stopped working. I think that's a miracle. <laughs> I mean, I can look at the fact that I never broke a bone until I was 60. I, you know, uh, my car wasn't damaged. I got it back in one piece. There are so many blessings. Yeah. Now, was it my consciousness that co-created my car being stolen? Don't know. <laughs> um, but I do know the self-shaming that I put on myself and the fact that am I going to be vulnerable enough? I mean, I'm laughing at myself now, but am I going to be vulnerable enough to be a minister who lived my whole life in religious science and sh stuff happens? You know, stuff happens. And sometimes it seems like it happens a lot, you know. And then other times, I, I guess if I reflect back, there's years and years where stuff didn't happen. So I'm tracking stuff. However, we need our spiritual tools when we're in turbulent waters. When we start to ruminate the negative is when we need our affirmations the most. It's not about what happens to us. It's about how we react to that, how we stand in our own light, and what happens if the message or the messenger in whatever befalls us is trying to tell us something. And if our egos or our shame or all the negativity gets in the way, we can't hear it. What happens if the treasure that is buried within us 
comes in all forms, especially when we don't judge it. How will we hold our pain and suffering? And without that suffering, how could we become deeply compassionate to another? Our difficulties to shine our light on, if we go deep enough, we will find the buried treasure. And those are the things we will value much more than the superficial things of looking good or having people think or we think they think we're good. It's a very convoluted thing, right? It's like I'm worried about what you think about me and what you're thinking about what I'm thinking. I know that doesn't sound kind of weird, but it's true. It's like we're so wrapped up. Our little ego gets very big sometimes. And I'm offering you the insight that our buried treasures sometimes come through our suffering and sometimes through our spiritual drama queen situations. <laughs> what do we do with it? Do we dive deep? Because I believe so wholeheartedly that self Introspection is the key to spiritual growth. In Sufism, they talk about if you're searching for water and you dig a hundred shallow holes, you won't reach it. You must dig a very deep hole to find water. And I think I'm having to dig a very deep hole <laughs> to find something magical that wants to express itself through my stories. Our stories, when we shed light on them, when we try to discover what the message is, what the messenger of that suffering is bringing to us, we may find the gold, the pearls, the diamonds, because that's where they come from. So look in your insights. Be kind to yourself. And please don't be a shame, blame person who says, well, what's going on in your consciousness? <laughs> it's time to really hold people close. That's why AA works. Because people who have the same problems come together, they're vulnerable, and they share their pain. And magic comes out of that. Magic comes out when we connect from the soul and are vulnerable and are willing to share our flaws and also our light. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to go into some prayer before our next beautiful music comes on and Lori gets to come up here again. That was so beautiful, Lori. Thank you. Whew. So as we close our eyes and go within, knowing that there's an infinite power, and this power is in and through all living things. It's the magic. It's the miracles. It's that mystical place where we can't really find it with our intellect, but know it in our soul. That there is a universe that is deep and that its design, God's design is divine. When we break a leg, when pain comes on an emotional level, there's something in the system called life that if we reach for it, we find comfort, we find peace. We remember who we are something bigger, something more magical than meets the eye. We take that knowledge and we search for more of that gold, that inner gold that says there's something more here to discover, to find, to feel, to experience so much more of life when we remove all the judgments we have on ourselves and others. May we walk today in compassion, in love, and be that light, that spiritual warrior, that light that carries with it the illumination 
of our stories with the endings that say find and seek something deeper, something more lasting, something with meaning that we can share the light with the next soul that we encounter so they too may recover quickly back onto the path of knowing that love rules. And so it is. <laughs>